half. Remember, you can't control V in Windows 8 in PowerShell. In Windows 10, in Windows 10 you can. You can. It's very Finally. nice. Finally, man. It's very nice. So I'm going to CD to that path. And it says that it uh, doesn't get it. Oh, because it's got the quotes. There we go. So now I'm in that path. OK, so this is my project. Now I have a package JSON here. This is a little bit of a node review. I have a package JSON here. So if I say npm, I want to, oops, I want to install Express, and I want you to save that for me. That means that it's going to write it into my package JSON file so that from now on, I can just say npm install, and it'll install all of my dependencies. So there we go. That's going to install Express. There's two things that I need to install, though, Express and Socket.io. And this is interesting. The service, no repository field. Not sure right off the bat what that error is for, so I will try again. No repository field. Well, it worked that time. Interesting. Well, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Cameraman, cut that from the footage. <laughs> All right. You guys can see my mistakes. I don't mind airing my dirty laundry. OK, now there's one more thing that we need in there, and that is Socket.io. Socket.io, in case you don't know, is a very nice, I'm sorry, I should have told you what Express is. Express is a, is a very uh, low level, easy, de kind of a de facto standard web server for Node. And Socket.io is the de facto standard for sockets, for using web sockets. So we're going to install that now. You can actually see, this is going to reload in Visual Studio, and you're going to see Express and Socket.io are listed now in my package management dependencies here. So those are available, so these two lines are no longer going to throw any errors for us, OK? Now we're going to create a little variable. We're going to um, uh, set the port. This is for uh, express. And then we're going to create a path. We're going to create a route, rather. This is a get route. And I want it to be, eh, let's just say, slash API slash command, OK? Now if we go back and look at the default JS, remember when we did this? We went to our service to azurewebsites.net, to API command. That's because of that. So we're just determining that that's what we want it to be. And now inside of there, we're saying if um, this is the target socket, I mean, sorry, if target socket has been set, then I want to tell something to the target socket. So the target socket is just my word that means this is the subject. This is what I'm going to be talking to. So in other words, Hopefully, this device has checked in already, and he requests, I'd like to be the target. So he's telling the service, I'm the one you're supposed to talk to. I'd like to hear the messages. So then, whenever we command, whenever we send a command, that's who it sends it to. It emits a command, whatever command we send, down to that target socket. That's actually the bulk of it. Besides that, all we're doing is, in, for our socket connection, we are um, allowing, we're handling this set target. We're going to see this in a second. This is when the the device connects to our, our service and says, hey, I'm the monkey, and I would like to receive these commands. He does a set target. And this is how the server handles it. It handles it by simply saying, OK, cool. You can receive those. You are now my target socket. So it has set that. Okay. So there's really not very much moving parts going on here. If I show this full screen, you can see that this is it for this app. It's just a little bit of express so that there's a web route that's <coughs> handling a get. And there's a little bit of I.O. so there's a, a socket event called set target that's being handled. And then when somebody calls that route, it calls down to that socket and sends it the command. OK? That's, I trust me. That's as complicated as it's going to get. Oh, I trust you. All right, trust me. OK, so that's the service. But now what we need to do is we need to, um, we need to deploy this to the server. Uh, you know what? This is covered in my blog post, so I'm going to skip over it. Um, if we want this to work uh, with a public address, a public website, <coughs> we need to publish it up to Azure so that wherever our device is, it's able to talk to that Azure. Otherwise, our device is going to have to be able to connect to our local host, and that's not necessarily fun. Okay? Let me just tell you one way around that. There's a tool called Ngrok. Have you ever used Ngrok? No. You can run Ngrok. It's so cool. You can run ngrok and point it to a local uh, uh, port on your computer, local IP and port, and it will make that a public port temporarily oh, nice. so that you have a public <clears throat> port that you can hit, and it'll actually be tunneling to your machine. Super cool. Very, very nice feature. But I like the name. I'm just going to pretend that we have published this to Azure, because I already have, and right. it's at commandmonkey.azurewebsites.net. Okay? 
So this website already exists, and it's all, but it's, it's doing nothing more than just that. Now, there is one step, though, that one thing that you have to open up. After you publish that to Azure, uh, you have to go log into Azure, and you have to turn on WebSockets, because by default, those are turned off. Okay? Okay. And by the way, in the article, I'm not telling you to go to Azure, log in with the portal, create a website, start from this template. It's not the long roundabout way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's jump out to the command monkey post. And I'll show you <clears throat> how when you build that service, here's building the node service. We build the service, paste that stuff in. And then when you create that web service, I'm having you um, create this deployment file and then configure your get stuff. And then when you create the website, here it is. Here's the magic. When you create your website, obviously, you'll have to use a different website address because that's right. mine. You yeah, do not have you it. You got it. It's yours. You use this dash dash git, and that says, hey, I want to be able to use git deploy. So now I can choose git push Azure master, and it publishes this project to Azure and deploys it as a node project in websites. That is cool. Super, super cool. And anytime I make a change locally, I test it out locally. It looks good. I push it to Azure Webmaster, and it publishes it for me. Super cool. So I won't cover that. Um, just trust that it works. And now we're going to cover building the device code. This is very, very simple. Here's the device project. This is all the instructions I have for the device project. So let's go do it. Let's jump out of full screen, which, by the way, is Shift-Alt-Enter. Very handy. Let's collapse a couple of projects here back up to the solution. And I want to add a new project. It's a node project. It's a blank node project. So let me just say that this is going to preclude that we are working with an IoT device that is capable of running node, which some are these days. Many, right. many are. Uh, I'm working here with the Intel Edison. Let's see if you can see this. It's awfully small. But this little block of, of silicon and electronics, this little block is actually an, a little tiny Intel Edison, just that size. And then it's sitting on top of a board that gives it nine degrees of freedom. It gives it three axis <coughs> rotation, accelerometer, and magnetometer. A GPIO board, so it, I can access all of these pins. I2C bus, so I can communicate with any I2C devices, which is pretty cool. And there's even a little LiPo battery on here, so I can make this thing oh. last for three or four yeah, hours. Put, put it on a table on and switch to my screen. That's a great you'll, idea. You'll be able to see it here if you switch to my, my computer screen. There you go. Excellent. I named mine Betty. By the way, so go. I like so to give my devices Betty. names. There's Betty. See if you can go low angle and look at the battery underneath that. There you go. So that's the Edison, and all I would really do is wire this up to whatever <clears throat> IoT device I'm interested in, and then I'm ready to command it. That little the little green board that you see on top is the Edison, and that board has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built right in. So yeah, super incredible. super powerful. Okay, let's go ahead and back to my screen. Let's create our command monkey dot device <coughs> and that already exists the way to remedy that is to jump into our solution like I told you I was playing with this but I don't want you to feel like there's any black magic here so I'm gonna go kill it and do this again and let's say command monkey device go we've got our our project it's real empty so I'm gonna use my trick again I'm actually going to jump over to my PowerShell. I'm already in this service, so I'm going to jump over to Command Monkey Device, and I'm going to say npm install. This time I want socket IO, but I want the client version. This is a client, and I want to save that. Okay? So I'm going to see that appear here under my node module, socket IO client. Excellent. In my app, I have hello world. That's not going to do. So let's see what we need to paste here. Let's grab this code. You have full access to all this code on my GitHub. You have the whole project on my GitHub, and then the uh, article, the blog post actually details it as well. So here we are creating a socket IO client and hooking it up to the Command Monkey Azure Websites Net. We're simply saying, OK, I'm going to request to be the target. Remember that on my service, I said, allow the clients to set their target like this. Here's how I'll handle it. So now here's how I call that. So easy socket.emit set target. Hmm. There we go. And now the server is saying, okay, cool. I will use the socket that just said that and, and store that as the target socket. So now that's been remembered. And now when the server sends me an event or a command, and this one's an event called command, here's what I want to do. And there's going to be a variable in there called command. <clears throat> I'm going to just simply say received a command. 
cool. Okay, now it's confession time, so I need the camera here. I meant to have the full cycle where you see everything from the phone all the way to the monkey work, but I lost a wire, didn't, I don't have a wire with me to hook the relay up to the board, and so I'm not gonna be able to um, do the full cycle, but we can see the monkey, all right? So we do have a monkey in the house. This is com uh, Tweet Monkey <laughs> slash Command Monkey. This is a monkey that I've, I've never met before. I, I don't, yeah, you're, you're, you're spooking me here. What's yeah, he's gone. Whew. Okay. <laughs> this monkey, unlike this one, <clears throat> is modified, and he has a relay sticking out of his <clears throat> right here. And this relay... <laughs> This relay is able to plug into a board like this, which I can use as a dev board for my Intel Edison, and you can't see any of that stuff, which I can use as a dev board for my Intel Edison. Here's, here it all is. And, and now this monkey will be able to receive these wireless signals. Now, I'm going to have to emulate that on the screen, and you're just going to have to trust me that it's going it's to be a beautiful thing. Okay, can you see all that? Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and we need to run the phone app because that's what we're going to use to trigger this. Right. And so we are going to run that on my actual device here and I've got it on my screen. So remember, see I've got that configured. Notice that service is now bold and now phone is bold. Isn't that slick? Oh, it's nice. So I can hit control F5 and phone runs. I learn something every day. There you go. Me too. There we go. The app is running and there's, there's the entire UI of my app. It just says command monkey. Excellent. Now let's run the device. Control F5, and there we go. It's a node project, and it has told the server, hey, I would like to be the target. Cool, so now it's the target. Cool. So now what we really want to do, <laughs> who did that? You said cool, you probably understood. No, 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 no. Somebody on the, on the call has commanded my monkey with move. That's uh, impressive. Okay, somebody That's was it. listening. Well done, you. Yes, well, somebody well, was well done really you. paying attention. <laughs> and we're nice. going to see, if you, if you are able to, um, to do that, feel free. We're just going to see well, those let, right now. Let's keep it PC. Oh, keep it, keep it PC. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to have to mute you. But thanks for giving them an idea. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got Command Monkey running. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the, Cor <laughs> use the Cortana call here. Monkey, dance. Commanding. Commanding monkey to dance, and now you can see that dance has appeared on the screen, so we have an effect proved that our entire path from the phone up to the cloud and back down <clears throat> works. So let's give this a try. Monkey chatter. Now on my watch here, it's saying just a second. Remember now, this has to go to my phone. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I didn't think about this. I switched phones. Uh, that just went to my phone, which isn't even hooked up to this. Yeah, screen, right. So that's not going to But work. it's okay. They, they yeah. saw the band integration earlier when yeah. I demoed it, so it's fine. Yeah, so. there you go. And if you, hook, if you wire this at home uh, following that blog post and you've got yourself your phone and your band, you can see the whole thing work end to end. But what we, what we want to see right now is monkey dance chip, 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 over here, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the end game, yeah. And he does have a switch. You know, we can just... I'm not going to try to fool you, but... So, my monkey, my monkey is better than your monkey. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Only All on right. MVA, folks. All right, Boy, there we, we went go. long. We yeah. better wrap this up. Yeah, there we go. Enough what? of the monkeys. But that was cool. Very cool stuff. Okay, you guys, I don't need to do a full summary. You guys know what you saw. We got an introduction, a bunch of technical information. We got some design content and then some advanced scenarios, including Command Monkey and a translator and all kinds of stuff. So hopefully this is all really good added value to you guys. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in on MVA. It was fun engaging with you. There is a poll online, so do remember to go into the online portal and fill out that poll. Those are really helpful for us. Do remember to follow at Active Nick and at Code Foster, and we would love to engage with you over Twitter, hear about the apps that you're making, help you be successful with the making of your apps, help you to have fun in this speech space like we are, right? Right, and remember, if you build a cool app or a cool game that uses speech, let us know on Twitter We'll be happy to try them out, review them, and promote them. There you we go. We need to see more great speech apps out there. So go forth and build. Absolutely. Go make. You guys have fun.
Thank you.